Okay, Emmy fans, and just award fans in general, I'm here with Joyce Eng, our senior editor from Gold Derby, and Riley Chow, our contributing editor. These two, are, and I'm Tom O'Neill, uh, the editor, the, these two folks are famous or infamous within our ranks as having these, these brains of encyclopedic knowledge so that when you make a prediction, uh, they can back it up by saying, well, there's this trend and this trend in the past. And so I want to have these two go at each other right now in cases of where their predictions clash. And I want you to don't just give me that old, oh, I feel that it's so-and-so's year. Don't give me that crap. Give me the numbers. Give me the stats, okay? Number one, this is where we're going to start off. And so uh, because you're our, our guest here, Riley, I'm going to set you up first. You've got Barry number one for comedy series. You've got Phoebe at number two. That's not what our friend Joyce says. She's got Fleabag at number one and Julia at number two. And by the way, neither one of you have the two frontrunners for comedy series, according to the experts, which, of course, is Veep and then Maisel. So, Riley, you first. Why Barry? Why Phoebe? Give me the stats. Convince me. Yeah, well, I will throw it down here, but... Uh, first of all, I want to say that even though Joyce and I disagree maybe more than uh, we do with some other editors in terms of the number of predictions that we share, in general, I feel like Joyce and I uh, think along the same lines. So comedy series is a great example of that, where neither of us have the top two in the odds, which are Veep and The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel, uh, but our top two is the same. We both have Fleabag and we both have Barry in our top two. And another example would be in best drama writing, where most people are either predicting Killing Eve or Game of Thrones, but our top two are Succession and uh, Better Call Saul. So even though we disagree in our orders, uh, I, I feel like I generally understand where Joyce is coming from, maybe more than I understand where you're coming from uh, in your predictions, Tom. Well, uh, you're not the first <laughs> one to wonder about that. Uh, well, thanks. That, that's, that's a really great insight. Well, let, I, so let's stick with comedy, series, and actress, and why? Yeah, back on track. Uh, I feel like Joyce's predictions overall are being a bit too diplomatic. Like she's predicting one show for comedy series, and then she's predicting uh, that same show to lose comedy actress to Veep. But she's also predicting Fleabag to lose comedy directing to Barry. I feel like uh, under this new voting system, um, the Emmy voters are kind of just voting for their favorites. And the way the Emmys are set up is you don't have voters who are voting for best actress, best director, best writing, and best series. Everybody just votes for their own peer group awards. So we see, uh, we've been seeing these sweeps happen in recent years that we never saw previously because voters are uh, just taking off their favorites and not putting a lot more thought into it. So I think that uh, Fleabag could absolutely uh, win Best Comedy Series, but I think if it does, it's going to go on uh, a sweep like the Marvelous Mrs. Maisel did last year and win eight trophies. So I, I, I understand why she would have Fleabag in first, since it's the, uh, you know, the talk of the town right now. It just swept the TCA awards. But if it wins the top Emmy, I would expect that it also cleans up everywhere else. Joyce, would you straighten out our uh, buddy here? And we know that, for example, Better Call Saul has swept the TCA Awards, all the Critics Awards before. It's never won a single Emmy, right? That, that doesn't mean anything. What is your thinking and, and, and how dare he challenge you? I mean, you're the, you're the queen here on all these predictions. Uh, I will say I, I've had Barry at number one this entire time until a couple days ago, and I just switched to Fleabag. Like, I personally like Fleabag, and I wanted to win, but I'll tell you why I finally switched to okay, Fleabag. Go for it. Because I was at TCA the past two weeks, and on FX Day, John Landgraf, the chairman, he just un completely impromptu mentioned Fleabag and Phoebe three times. Like, his answers would have been completely fine without Fleabag mentioned at all. But I just felt like, like I knew there was this groundswell and passion for Fleabag. And in the final round of voting, like passion is what gets you to win. Like under this new system for the nominations, it, you have to be seen. So, and clearly Fleabag was seen. And we know like people, like famous people loved it the weekend it dropped. And it came out, you know, just at the right time. Like it and was seen enough just before voting closed. 
but I think it's like really, you know, developed the past couple months. And now like, you know, Phoebe's on the cover of Hollywood Reporter and like, you know, people really love it. And I think it could win. And Barry, it has 17 nominations It exploded this year, but it's also very dark and it, they haven't given comedy series to a show that dark and serious yet. I don't think that means it can never be done. I think Barry can definitely win next year because Fleabag is definitely not in the running. But that's why I changed to Fleabag. But I agree with Riley. Like, I think Barry could win. And I am also shocked that Veep is at number one considering how <laughs> drastically it underperformed this time. But I can also see Maisel winning since I think that appeals to the older voters the most. Like, Fleabag... There's a lot of sex and, you know, kind of like crew talk and stuff um, that might not be up their alley. Like Fleabag is definitely, or Maisel is definitely more up their alley. But that's why I have Fleabag. And I agree with Riley that they could definitely, or Fleabag or Barry could definitely sweep like all the comedy actress and writing and directing races. But I would be more confident picking a sweep if the voting system were like the Oscars where everyone votes for every category. Cause I mean, you know, Donald Glover won directing two years ago, but Master of None still won writing. So I like, we've, we've seen like the directing and writing sweeps more so on the drama side in recent years. Uh, so I can, I, but I do agree. Like if like Fleabag is going to win writing, which I think is still a number one in our odds, then, and if people love it that much, I could easily win directing. Cause if, you know, last year, um, Teddy Perkins lost directing, then Ronnie and Lily can yeah, directing. Yeah. Uh, Riley, don't stand for this. Get in here and fight, <laughs> and fight your turf um, and, and, and throw this kind of stat perspective in here, which is um, uh, somebody was saying in one of our previous uh, slugfests that, oh, this whole Phoebe thing that's taking off right now, and boy, it is. It's 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 everywhere. She's got the buzz. She's got the just just like that was happening at Maisel at that cr in a crashing point of of Emmy voting. But the counter argument I would make is um, that that doesn't it usually take a year or two to register at the Emmys that and maybe Maisel had a uh, leg up because Veep wasn't there and because it has marvelous in the title and because it had these joyous. Uh, billboards all around uh, Hollywood during the voting, and this is this is this Phoebe thing is a show called Fleabag. Uh, I'm not sure they had wa that they're watching any of this stuff, but if it's done by popular zeitgeist, etc., yeah, Phoebe and Fleabag win. But and and then maybe that's what drove uh, Handmaid's Tale and and uh, Maisel to win and beat the odds. Um, as streaming networks, etc. But what about these other tea leaves? What about things like what? She's the writer direct. She's the writer star of this show, and you get extra points for that, or do you? Yeah. Uh, well, it's interesting that you say that it takes a year sometimes because that's part of why I'm going with Barry because uh, at the guilds, Barry got you know tons of nominations. It actually got more nominations than any first year comedy ever has at the guilds. Because normally it does take time for them to break out. Um, you know, SAG is often very late to the party. They'll wait until the Emmys uh, award somebody and then they'll bring somebody on. Uh, but Barry seemed to hit immediately. You know, last year it got 13 nominations. Um, it's from the same, a lot of the same people who made Silicon Valley, but it did better than it ever had. Uh, this year it's got 17 nominations, which is actually the same number of nominations that Veep had at its peak. And it's also the same number of nominations that Modern Family had at its peak. So 17 is a huge total uh, for Barry to have. Um, going back to what I said before about how I don't think there's going to be a split, um, you know, because even if uh, people seem very confident in Fleabag winning writing is what I'm getting at, even though they're not so confident about it in other categories. And I don't think that the auteur comedy is always something uh, that the Emmys will go for uh, just because it's made by an auteur who's, you know, writing, producing, acting, and that kind of thing. I mean, we saw Atlanta lose to the marvelous Mrs. Maisel last year in writing and also directing for Teddy Perkins. And we saw Veep take down Louie uh, a few years ago back when Veep was coming up. So 
I don't know if there's uh, if the support for Phoebe Waller Bridge can stand tr uh, can uh, transcend any wave of support for Barry that I'm expecting. And another reason I'm going for Barry is just because it seems like for the first time in ever we have all of these great shows uh, made by women and about women. You know, we've got Russian Doll, we've got Veep, Marvelous Mrs. Maisel, and Fleabag. So normally, you know, we have a whole bunch of shows about men and then maybe one show about women and uh, the women's show might be able to pull off the win. I, I feel like there are a lot of old voters in the Academy who maybe uh, will prefer, you know, kind of more of a throwback show, which in this case uh, would be Barry since it's about men. It's kind of like uh, Breaking Bad. Um, yeah, I, I feel like there will be a different kind of vote split here. Joyce. <laughs> well, I, I think and, it's and because false. Uh, a lot of the voters are men themselves, I should say. <laughs> I, I think it's a false equivalence to compare those writing auteur losses with. I mean, because last year, I, I think most people predicted Mesa would win, and I think even if Amy Sherman Palladino was not considered like an auteur, like Louis C.K., like she's still known for her writing. Like she's like an Aaron Sorkin. Like her dialogue is fast paced, witty. Like. Her Gilmore Girls scripts were infamous for being like almost 200 pages. She's known for her dialogue, so I don't think that was shocking at all. I think most people last year were predicting her to win writing and Teddy Perkins to win directing. And I don't, I'm assuming you're referring to the first writing beat win in 2015. Like, I don't, yeah. I don't remember, like, I don't think Louis was the favorite that year either. It wasn't like sort of Fat Lady when he won for that, when everyone knew he was winning. So I don't, I don't know if that was also as much as a surprise that Louie lost to Veep, especially because that was the year that Veep won series for the first time. So I don't know if those are like perfect comparisons, um, but like, you know, yeah, Phoebe is the auteur and she's, I, I just think there's too much heat on her right now to lose writing and like everyone lost their minds on Twitter once like the Fleabag scripts were released like a couple weeks ago. Like, I think she she's just like currying so much respect that that's the safest category for her to win, even let's if like let's, let's, let's win let's run the numbers. You have twenty four thousand people voting for series. Yes, the other categories are done by peer group, but yeah, let's have a vote splitting here and stuff like that. We've got four real shows that could win here, um, and so how? And I like I like your observation, Riley, about the gender uh, uh, thing that it. That could benefit Barry. Yes, that's that's a real wonderful insight. But keep keep going with this thinking. Um, the reason I'm wimping out with Veep is I just think it's the default. I loved it this season. I don't understand the internet griping about. It. But um, the I think that that just the default vote of lazy voters, uh, the old geezer ones like me, are just oh they, 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 it's the it's the West Wing of of you know, the prestige. Uh, you know, political message show, uh, it's leaving. It's just like TV itself repeats. Uh, the Emmys are like repeats. So um, Chris Beecham, our buddy, often often points this out to us about uh, when you have several leading com front runners, what does that mean? Maybe that does benefit Fleabag because the, the, the cool cat factor then is is certainly on it now. Anyway. How do the numbers, let's get back to the stats and numbers. How do the numbers of this crowded category of, of real front runners, how does that affect the outcome? Go for it. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, well, I think that Veep can be entirely discounted because it only has nine nominations. <laughs> uh, its, it's last season had 17. So if there's all this support for Veep, uh, where did they all go? Like, where did all the voters go that previously voted for it? I, I think that we see shows, you know, win for a number of years until they don't. You know, we saw 30 Rock uh, win for a number of years, and it kept getting its nominations even after it stopped winning. But it, it just kind of trails off. Um, and Mad Men, too, is, is another example that's uh, quite similar to Veep, actually, in that it missed uh, a directing nomination for its series finale. Uh, Mad Men at least got editing, though. And uh, Veep, I, I feel like, yes, it won for its last season, 
but it didn't win last year. So I think that had it been eligible last year, we might have seen uh, Veep kind of start to trail off. Uh, but instead, we had this hiatus, so it took a steep dive uh, once it I'm came back. What, what, is, what is this? its uh, nomination tally this year, roughly? It has nine this year, and it had 17 last time. And the way the voting is set up now is that you can mark off an unlimited number of contenders on your nomination, nomination. Yeah, no, so obviously not. It's a plurality vote for the finale for the winner. Yeah, so previously we could have seen more uh, passion come into the nominations, where now it's just about visibility. So Veep should have uh, done even better in nominations than it could be expected to do in the winner's phase when you have passion come into it. But Veep is even faltering when people are just checking off, you know, all the shows that they saw and they liked. So I, I feel like it had a low threshold for uh, success, and it didn't even clear that. Uh, yeah, I think like Veep's issue is that during its hiatus year, the voters just found new toys to play with that they like, <laughs> Maisel and Veep. Um, you know, if if like the comedy race were like the drama race this year, where it's just like Game of Thrones and like nothing else, then I think Veep would have a better chance. But, uh, you know, they we know like they love Maisel. It, it won a record eight Emmys last year, and they also really like Barry. And, this year we know they really, really like Barry, and they also really, really like Fleabag. So I think like there's just more passion for those shows. And Veep, I think they still like. I think they're, you know, yeah, laziness can you know go a long way. Like people can just check it off. Like you know, they know what they know. They've seen it, and they'll just vote for it. But I, I think if it just kind of fell through the cracks a little bit, and then it, I mean, like seven to nine is a huge drop. Or you know, like the in in its you know case, like the defending comedy series, since it wasn't eligible last year, like that's a massive drop. Riley, last year you wrote an article for us uh, that I have gone back to many times and looked at, running these numbers about uh, the corresponding tea leaves. You, you constantly remind us of all this. What you know, you need to be, in order to win series, you need to be nominated. Yeah, for writing, writing and or directing, and they're not all nominated for both, but. Um, you need to be in one or the other or both of those slots. And then you've had this terrific uh, observation to the years about these other categories like sound mixing and editing and that and, and casting. And if you want, uh, as a prognosticator like us, to figure out who's really going to win, look for the corresponding nominations there, right? So what do those other nominations tell you when you run those numbers about what will win on top? Yeah, it's, it's tricky because sound mixing, yeah, that is a great one. And editing is another great one, you know, beyond the normal writing and directing that we always look at. But the problem with the sound mixers and the editors is that they are not quite as uh, savvy about, you know, what's new and what's trendy, which is actually why they're such good uh, predictors of what will win uh, the series award because they tend to kind of just go with the consensus. So we saw a couple of years ago where The Handmaid's Tale, it missed editing and it missed sound mixing. And then at the end of the year at the Guild Awards, it was variably nominated or even won those awards once the voters had gotten around to them. So uh, the point that I'm uh, coming around to is that Fleabag is missing in a number of categories that uh, say Barry, and uh, or even Russian Doll are nominated in. But any snub uh, for Fleabag, I can just chalk up to how Fleabag peaked right at the end of eligibility. So I, I think that it's, it struggled with visibility when it came to nominations, but I would expect that uh, it's being heavily viewed uh, since nominations, and it will have the passion that it needs uh, if it's going to be winning uh, the series award in the end. So what I'm saying is uh, there are there are all these statistics, but uh, well, what who do the, the statistics? Which show does the, which show this year do the stats favor? I don't buy this Fleabag. They they finally they the sound the steak yeah. eaters caught up with Fleabag in the last five weeks. That's not happening. Okay. <laughs> uh, either they're aware of it or they're not. Yes, they are. It's a good point you're raising. Yes, they are insulated for a while from the, 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 the trendy talk because these, these are people um, who live out in the valley who aren't in that little Hollywood bubble uh, and uh, that you know, th this kind of thing echoes and then takes off elsewhere. 
but just looking at those corresponding uh, categories, editing, sound, writing, directing, what do yeah. those, forget the bias, forget what's cool, what do okay. those tea leaves tell us if you just look at those? Just looking at those, then it's between Barry and The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. But really? I would say Barry is ahead because The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel missed writing. And people will say like, oh, you know, Modern Family, it used to win Best Comedy Series without uh, a writing nomination. And that was true. But back then, uh, that was back when Modern Family would be submitting seven to nine episodes, right? And there were only five slots in the writing category. And this was back when uh, the voters could only vote for five uh, scripts per category. You know, they couldn't just check off as many as they wanted. So it suffered massive vote splitting. Um, whereas this year, The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel only submitted two episodes, and there were seven nominees, and voters could check off as many as they wanted. So it faced zero vote splitting, and it still couldn't get nominated for writing. Joyce, what do you think? Uh, these these other tea leaves, that's what we're looking at, these. Those, yeah, uh, like, here, like the stats casting and all favor that. Barry, because it hit, like, uh, like, all above the line it needed to hit, and you know, important below the lines. Um, I agree with Riley that had Fleabag maybe premiered like late April, it could have maybe reeled in a few more. I mean, it still got editing, unlike Handmaid's Tale, which premiered in late April and missed editing and still won drama series. Uh, but yeah, like I think if Fleabag had premiered earlier, Andrew Scott probably would have gotten in, you know? Uh, but the stats definitely favor Barry. So if you're just going by the nomination count, uh, then pick Barry. <laughs> but uh, yeah, like the Maisel writing snub, it, it it definitely hurts it, which I think that's also why it works in Fleabag's favor, because, you know, like sh she doesn't have to contend with Amy Sherman Palladino, the reigning champion, who's, you know, like, so I think that that makes it easier for people, if they don't have that option of voting for Maisel, like they might turn to Phoebe too. You know, also Barry's about show business. Um, that could help. But so is Maisel, it's about show business. Uh, the Rock is about show business. You know, these, these past favorites. And remember, it used to be that TV shows and movies about show business would not win at the Oscars. You know, like how long it went that we had uh, Best Picture, never have a movie about Hollywood win Best Picture, and now we've had lots of um, Tom, you said that uh, you wanted a blood fest here, so yeah, I will go yeah. after uh, a relevant prediction of Joyce's. Uh, now, she's not predicting uh, The Marvelous Miss and Basil to win directing, but she has the episode, We're Going to the Catskills, ranked ahead of the episode All Alone. And I understand if you're in our prediction center, why you would make that choice, because one has a flashier title. But for the actual voters on their ballots, they'll see that uh, All Alone was directed by Amy Sherman Palladino, and We're Going to the Catskills was directed by her husband. So I, I think this is a bit of a flaw in the Gold Derby Prediction Center, where oh, we are oh undermining God. last you year's Chris winner. You're going to be banned from these from the editorial uh, but, you know, Joyce uh, is, is normally pretty savvy. Yeah, defend so. yourself, Joyce. See, I don't like my, my, my two, I don't really have a defense because my two favorites are <laughs> Ronnie and Lily and, and episode 2.1 of Fleabag. So, like, for me, like, the Maze episodes are interchangeable. Like, Caskills is the better episode, but I agree with you that Amy has the bigger name. So, but I think they could also vote split because it's two Maze episodes. It, it, it's interesting oh, that the directors... Like the directors, they have names on their ballots, and I feel like if they didn't have names on their ballots, Fleabag would be much better positioned because people would just assume that it's directed by Phoebe Waller Bridge. Maybe, but I don't even know if like that's even like a narrative that she wrote and directed the whole series. You know, like I think people know that she wrote and starred in the series. Um, but I mean, like I I agree that obviously if she had directed it, it would have been like a bigger deal. Um, yeah, like the, the names on the ballots thing is, is definitely a, a big factor in like name checking and stuff. Come on, you gotta quit being so poor, <laughs> cordial. I like, I, you know, you almost went into the kill there, Riley. You know, I'm taking on joy. And then you lightened up. Uh, 
Well, I mean, like in his defense, I I agree with him. Like I I think she can win because she's Amy Sherman Palladino. <laughs> I just I just have two yeah, other episodes ahead of her. Win and why? Um. All right, so let's jump down to uh, supporting actress in a comedy series. And here you disagree. We'll stick with comedy. Joyce has Olivia Coleman number one, and so do I. And Joyce has uh, Alex Borstein number two, and so do I. And almost everyone else has Alex Borstein number one, except that troublemaker, Riley Chow, who's got Betty Gilpin on there. Come on, Riley. What is, what, what is your thinking here? Uh, well, it, it's vote splitting, uh, largely. I mean, people say that Sean Clifford in Fleabag had a much better season two. And I am concerned that Olivia Coleman can win because she had a stronger season one. And I think that voters who are watching Fleabag uh, kind of only watched it the entire thing in the last couple months it's in, since the uh, both seasons only take a few hours and the first season got no nominations. But I'm concerned about vote splitting there. Um, as for The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel, uh, I think that Maren Hinkle will take a few votes since she's uh, doing something uh, different than she did last year. And also, I feel like uh, there's not very much heat around Marvelous Mrs. Maisel, so I, I'm not even sure if vote splitting is an issue. Uh, Betty Gilpin, though, she uh, has been seen as a standout on GLOW for, I suppose, a couple seasons now, since she's the only one who has gotten in, and also uh, she's the only one who got in at Critics' Choice this year. She's a co-lead um, on this show, and I, I feel like uh, she she kind of could be uh, like a Maggie Smith, you know, in the uh, final season of Downton Abbey, where they this is a show that the actors branch, uh, you know, we we think they've seen it, uh, and it does very well at SAG, but somehow it only gets one nomination, so all of the support can pool for that uh, individual. Joyce, defend your predictions here. You've got Olivia Coleman number one, Alex Borstein number two, and why is Riley wrong? <laughs> uh, well, I do think I have Betty at like three or four. I, I want to vote for Betty or Sarah Goldberg from Barry because I think under the tape system, either one of them would be a slam dunk. Uh, but I have Olivia and I think she can overcome vote splitting because she is the bigger name and she just won an Oscar and they just dropped the crown release date and teaser and her EW cover this week. Uh, so I think she, like, even though I agree, like Sean uh, had a better season too, I think Olivia's clout and I agree with Riley that people might go back and watch season one. Uh, might vote for Olivia. So I think she can overcome it there. Uh, um, I agree with like the maze of vote splitting between Alex and Marin, but I'm still concerned about like lazy voters, like they could just check off Alex Borstein again. Uh, but I, I can't see actually Betty winning in like a Tandy Newton kind of way where she should have won for season one, you can argue. And then there's like a bunch of people from the same show the following year, and then she wins for the second season. Uh, we're running out of time. Last question has to do with this whole vote splitting thing. And this is where you guys really uh, are experts because you, you follow the voting patterns, uh, the voting changes, methodology, and all of that. And we've had such changes recently that what is throwing all of us as editors of Gold Derby uh, is this um, vote splitting where it used to be when you were nominated against a co-star co in the old days, it was a good thing. It would help you win. Uh, and now we think it's a bad thing until the last time we did a uh, slugfest, some of us, we started counting up all the exceptions to the rule. Oh my God, look at last year, this one won, and that one won, and that one up, up against co-stars. So then I, I talk myself out of the, the vote splitting argument again. So um, why are we, are we running away a little too fast and far with this vote splitting idea? And this year it matters more than anything because we have three or four, what is it, Game of Thrones stars in one category, and we have this whole Sandra O versus Jodie Comer thing. Uh, Riley, you first. Does it? Is, are we making too much of this vote splitting, or, or is it now just a fact? Well, I think it's like predicting any awards, you know, be it the Oscars or the Golden Globes, or in this case, the Emmys. We have, you know, hundreds of rules uh, of, you know, ways that we see the voters vote over the years, and we say, like, okay, well, this will happen because this has happened before. 
But you can also make the counter argument because there are always examples of that. So all of our arguments are contradictory. Uh, sometimes vote splitting matters. Sometimes I don't, want, I don't want sometimes this or that. What is the new rule? The old rule was nominated against the co-star, you win because they had judging panels of 50 to 70 voters. They saw actual episodes. And then they would, if you were nominated against the co-star, you would get a performance basically on their tape too. And it was a secret help. What is the new reality? <laughs> uh, well, it, it matters. It, it hurts you more than it did in the past. But it can also be indicative of uh, overwhelming support. If you're getting in and also all your co-stars are getting in, then maybe just everyone is voting for your show. So I don't think that Fleabag is as strong as Joyce thinks it is. It, it is. So I think that there will be some vote splitting in supporting actress. But if Fleabag is as strong as, say, The Handmaid's Tale a couple years ago, uh, like with Anne Dowd winning supporting actress over Samira Wiley, then I think Olivia Coleman can absolutely take it. Um, final thought to you, Joyce, uh, and, and, and let us first just clarify Riley on a couple things here, which is number one, there is a lot of, of uh, cool uh, support, hipster support for Maisel still this year. Uh, and you had said that earlier, you don't think the support is as strong. It is really strong, Riley. Uh, I'm in New York Maisel now. just launched like a campaign today where you could like go to stores and like book a hotel for prices in like the 50s. So it's like 50 cent gas. <laughs> right, they're doing they're marvelous stunts like that, which are fun and great. So um, I think it really does have this strong, this strong momentum. And I do think that we've talked about this many times, the, the inclusion of aspirational words in the titles of, of like marvelous really help. And also it's just such an appealing story, so well made. Uh, it's so well written, it's just, um, and it brings you joy. It makes you feel joyful. Barry is a you know, dark, dark, like Joyce was saying earlier, and and the others, and 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 Veep just went really to the dark zone over the last couple of years with the new uh, writing team. And I loved every minute of it. But it's no longer huggable. And, and, and we used to say that that that's what Emmy voting was all about were hugs. Uh, so Joyce vote splitting. What do we know now that we? Uh, I think we vote splitting is more of a thing now than it was under the old system where you know you could just be like this person submitted a terrible tape or this person has this person is in comedy but they have a really dramatic moment in their co-stars tape so it shows a well-rounded performance and they will end up winning but now you can only check off one and i think unless you're truly undeniable to voters like you're the breakout star like both of sterling k brown's wins he beat co-stars and he was the breakout star or like the favorite both times, like in OJ, everyone was talking about him as Chris Darden. Like no one was talking about John Travolta in, uh, in, in the good way at least, or David Trimmer, like he was the breakout star and he won. And then This Is Us, again, he was like riding off that OJ momentum and Milo was a surprise getting in, but Sterling, you knew he was winning. So he won there. And I think like when you see, like last year, you know, I think, a lot of people were torn between um, Judith Light and Penelope Cruz in Versace, and neither of them were truly, one, yeah. yeah, but neither of them were truly undeniable on the show. Um, even though I, I do think like Judith had like a really great scene in her episode, but it, you know it wasn't it wasn't like a, like a huge like zeitgeist seizing series like OJ was, and then yeah, Merritt Weaver ended up winning that. So I think. It's definitely more of a factor. So, you know, like with like the Game of Thrones women, like they all have so many pros and cons in their columns that like Julia Garner or Fiona Shaw could just slip right in because, you know, you might consider Maisie Williams your favorite and vote for her, but someone else yes. might consider Lena their favorite and vote for them. Like you can no longer rank like them one and two because if you could, then there's, there's maybe there's no Lena one clear dominant. Um, yeah. Okay, we, we've uh, got to hit pause on this. We're going to come back to this, and and um, uh, sometime next week, let's reconvene and drill, keep drilling down, because you guys bring a perspective here that uh, most other editors don't. Uh, we, The rest of us, uh, and, and you guys, sometimes get caught up too much in our own, well, I feel this. I feel, oh, 
fuck I feel that. This, this is a game of crystal ball stats and momentum and who's spending what, what's got the cool factor and does it matter? Have, they, have the Emmys really caught up to all this and voting process and stuff? So uh, we pay attention to that. So you watching this and listening to this uh, discussion, uh, you gotta pay attention to it too because that's how you win at Gold Derby. That's how you beat us and prove that you are the real expert. So. Go to Gold Derby, make your predictions, and prove that you know more than these guys. Because if you can beat them, you can beat everybody.